In this video, I'm going to show you how you can run your Python web scrapers in the cloud. So we're going to be using cron job on a Linux server, uh, and we're going to set it to run our code at a specific time every day. So the code that I'm going to run is this one here. It's a basic web scraper that goes out to this website. And as you can see, it's got um, new products every day. And we just scrape that information and email it back to us. This could be any kind of scraper script that you've written. So there's a couple of things that we need to know first. That is, we're going to be using a Linux server and it's going to be running in the cloud. So there are going to be a few Linux commands we're going to need to go through, but I'll run through them all with you. And you need a way to get your code onto that server. The best way to do that is Git and GitHub. If you have a Git and a Git, if you have a GitHub account, you can use that. If you don't, you can copy and paste it across, but it's nowhere near as easy or as, as convenient. So the first thing that we want to do is we need to create a DigitalOcean account. Now DigitalOcean lets us set up a droplet that we can, which is basically like our Linux server in the cloud that we can use. Now these aren't free. However, um, if you click in the description, you can use my link and you will get $100 credit to use and it runs out after two months. So that gives you two months worth of testing and messing around and you don't have to pay anything. So that's quite cool. There are other services like this too, or you can use a Raspberry Pi if you've got one handy, that works just as well. Um, the newer ones are better, obviously. So to get started, once you log in, you can see I've actually already got a droplet running here, but we're going to create a new one. So we click create and create a droplet. And once that loads, we can select Ubuntu. Uh, it's going to be on a basic, flood, a basic plan. So even when it's paid, it's only $5 a month. So if you have lots of scrapers that you run constantly, this could be a good option for you. Uh, I'm going to select London because I'm in the UK and we're going to authenticate with a password. So choose a root password, which you'll need to remember to log in with and make sure you abide by its rules. We can give it a name. I'm just going to call this one YT demo, but call yours whatever you like. And that will do. So I'm just going to hit create. So whilst that's loading up, I can just show you here that I've got my repo on my GitHub. This is the code that we just saw. Um, and this is what I'm going to use to git clone onto that droplet. So that we are going to need to use a few Linux commands. And we are also going to need to use SSH, which is to create a secure shell to connect to our droplet. I like to use the Windows terminal. Um, you can use either WSL, which is the Linux one, or you can use PowerShell if you don't want to install WSL on your system. But this is much easier to use the Windows terminal from the App Store in Windows 10 as opposed to the default one. It just looks nice and it's easier to use. So hopefully this is done, almost booting up. There we go. When it's finished, it gives us an IP and we can click copy, that copied, and come back to our terminal. And I'm going to be using the PowerShell because I suspect most of you are as well. So what we want to do is we want to type SSH for secure shell root because we're going to log into the root account of our uh, droplet at and then paste the IP just like that. We just want to click uh, hit yes to get through this and that's fine. It will add it to our known hosts, which is okay with us. Type in your password and if you get it right, there we are, we're in. So there's two things that we always need to do first with our new droplets and we need to update the system. So we want to do apt update. Apt is like the package manager on Ubuntu if you don't know. That should run nice and quickly. What we want to do is we just want to make sure we start off with a up-to-date system before we do anything else. So it's come back and it said 56 packages can be upgraded. So then we just run apt, apt upgrade. This will take a little bit longer. See, so there's 174 megabytes of upgrades to do. I'm just going to let this run and I will come right back to you. So that's finished updating, which is great. I'm just going to hit control L to clear the screen, or you can just type clear and hit enter. So the next thing we want to do is we want to check the Python version on our uh, on our droplet. So if you hit Python, it'll probably tell you can't be found, and that's because we are on Linux, so we need to do Python 3. And we can see that we are running Python 3.8.5, which is fine, which is great. The next thing we need to do is we need to get pip installed because we are going to need to install the pack Python packages that we need for our scrapers. So to do that, we can do apt install and i think it is python 3 dash pip okay yes it is and there we'll hit yes there um, i'll have all of these commands written out and i'll put them somewhere below either they'll be on my github link or um, in text just so you don't have to um, 
memorize them as I type them out super fast. Okay, that's done. So now we can think about um, getting our code from our GitHub onto our, our server here. Now, the easiest way to do that is to git clone, which we're gonna do in just a minute. I'm gonna talk just a second about um, requirements though. So if you were smart, which like unlike me, when you created your actual script, you ran a virtual environment. So if you had a virtual environment where in, uh, that you'd installed your code on everything, you would have pip installed your packages into that virtual environment. You can then run a pip freeze and output that to requirements.txt that you can then upload to your GitHub. So when you pull everything down onto your server with your Git clone, you can just run the requirements.txt and then it'll install everything that you need. I didn't do that because, um, yeah, reasons. So we're gonna go ahead and actually pip install manually what we need. So I'm gonna do pip3, remember we're on Python 3, pip3 on Linux in this case. So I'm gonna do install, and I can't remember what we need. It's request some beautiful soup and pandas. So we can just go ahead and install those. So requests, pandas, and beautiful soup four. So I'm just gonna let that install, and it's done. Again, clear the screen. The next thing I want to do is clone the repo. So we can see it's here. So I'm just going to go back to the main page. I'm going to copy the URL. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're in the home directory on our server. So if you were to type ls here, you would find not a lot. What we want to do is we want to type cd and then two dots to go back up. Now we're in our main root directory. And then if we do ls, we can see all of the main Linux folders here. Now it doesn't, doesn't matter if you don't understand all of them. What you need to know is that we need to be in our home folder. So we want to cd into home and then ls and we can see that there's nothing there. Great, so that's good. Now we want to git clone our, our repo. So we do git clone and paste the URL. And that's going to clone all of that into our home directory. And now if we run ls, we can see that there it is there a lovely titled project. So if I go into that and we can see here we've got two files, the readme and the py file. So if I was to run python3 and then run my py file, we find that I've got an error. Now I did this because when you upload uh, your code to github, the, you do not want to put any passwords in there or anything like that. So when you have code that you need to have passwords for, like this in this case, it's my email account. I find that you, if you put that in a separate file, you will be able to keep that separate and you won't need to upload it to GitHub and you can just create it manually. So if I come back to my code here, we can see that I have right here, import creds. Now creds is another Py file, which I've got here. And all it has is password and then your pass here. Now I can choose not to upload this creds file to GitHub and then I can have my, rep my repo as public and no one will see my password. So I need to re re recreate this py file on my droplet so that actually works. So I'm going to use nano to do that. Uh, nano is a text editor which is just always installed on Linux servers. You can use Vim as well if you want to. So I'm going to just do nano and then I'm going to say creds dot p y and in here i'm just going to replicate what i had before except with my real password this time which unfortunately i'm not going to show with you so now i've saved that we can see ls and we have a creds.py file so i'm going to clear that and we are going to run it again and hopefully we should get no errors i didn't actually have any output from this python file but my phone is just about to buzz and there it goes i just heard it i've got an email and that's from this file. So now that I know that this script works on this system, if it doesn't, you need to do some uh, debugging to try and find out why. Maybe you don't have the right packages installed or maybe there's some other errors or issues that you'll need to resolve before you carry on. But now that that's done, we can move on and we can actually have a look at using cron job. So to get to the cron job list, it's called cron tab. So we just need to type that in and then dash E and it's going to create one for us. Now these are all our user cron jobs that the system's going to run for us. This is the first time. So it's going to say you need to select an editor. It says nano is the easiest one and that's very true. Hit one and we get this up here. Now this does explain how to create a cron job 
and get it working. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come to another website, which is crontab.guru. And this is really handy to see how what you put into this information comes out. So each of these stars, as you can see, represented by a minute, hour or day, a month, and then the week. So depending on what information we put here will depend on how often our script is run. So if you put star, star, five stars like this, and then the link, the um, path to your code, it will run it every minute forever. We don't want that. Um, but what I'm going to do at the moment is I'm going to just say every minute now because we're going to test it. But if we wanted to, like I'm going to finish with, run this code at 8am every day, you would put an 8 in here and you can see that it says at every minute past 8, hour 8. It's not quite what we want, so we need to change this to a 0 and that's going to say at 8 o'clock in the morning. If we click on random a couple of times, you can see that it, you can do all sorts of different things. And you can kind of just click on this and figure out what each of these ones means and why you or um, how you can do it. So you can even use uh, name tags there. But let's, let's just go back to 08 star star star. And that's what the one we're going to use at the end. So now we want to test that um, we can get our cron jobs working properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually exit out of this. And I'm going to create a new file in the same directory here. And I'm just going to say, uh, we'll call it test.py. And in here, I'm just going to put a simple print statement that says, if you can see this, it's working. There we go. And I'm going to exit and save. Now, if I run Python 3 and test.py, you can see that we got our output. So what we can do is we can use this to um, on our cron job to check that we are in the right place and everything's working by uh, outputting this to another file and then we can check that file to make sure it's working. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So we're going to run cron tab dash e, e and come down again and we're going to come back to our five little stars. Now there's two ways to do this. You could put a line at the top of your code, uh, the shebang line that basically tells the server that it runs with Python 3 and then you can make that executable. But the way I prefer to do it, which is simpler, is just simply put the path to the Python first and then the path to the script, the script that you want to run. Now I know that on a Linux machine, the Python path is slash USR, USR slash bin slash Python three. And now we need to put the complete path to our Python script, which was home, because we came into the home folder earlier, remember? Um, I think it was whiskey cron job slash test dot p y now even though that file has output we won't actually see anything so we want to so we want to send that to a file that we can then look at so if you do two uh sideways arrow things like that that will send it to a new file so we then we can just say um, we'll just send it to the home folder and we'll just say uh cron dot so if i just make that above there you can see all we've done is uh, this is the path to our Python, this is the path to our script, and two little arrows which mean we're going to send the output to a new file which is home slash cron.log. So I'm going to save this, write it, and I'm going to then go to the home folder and I'm going to wait for a minute and hopefully we get a log file that comes up with the output in it. So I waited for a minute and now if we type ls we can see we have cron.log and if I use the cat command which basically spits everything in the file out to the screen we can see that we have our Python code. Now that I know that this is successfully working I can then change the cron tab to my Python script. If this doesn't work for you there's a couple of things that I would recommend checking. First one is that your Python script is in the home folder somewhere because the cron tab is user specific. So you want to be in your user's home folder and also check that you have input the stars, the five stars in correctly and the Python path and your file path. But I did, so I know that works. Come back to cron tab dash E and we can change this from test.py to uh, I think it was called new whiskey dot py and we don't need to output the file output it to anywhere because we know that it works and we hit exit save and there we go now at eight o'clock every morning that file is going to run it's going to scrape that data and it's going to email it to my phone so that's it guys that's how you do it 
Uh, you need to use some basic Linux commands. You need to learn SSH a little bit. As I said, I'll have everything written up in a description for you so you can see all the commands that I use to do this and you can work through it yourselves. Don't forget you can run this on any Linux machine. So if you have a spare computer that you want to use as a server in your house, you can just install Ubuntu on it and this will work exactly the same way. Or if you have a Raspberry Pi, you could do that too. Um, but just make sure you have one of the newer ones because the first ones are really, really slow. Um, or if you want to do it all on in the cloud, uh, as I said, DigitalOcean has $100 credit going on at the moment. If you use my link, that would be really nice of you um, and get that started. And if you carry on and you like it, it's only $5 a month. There are other ones as well. There's Linode, or if you wanted to do a bit more managed, you could do Python anywhere. But that's entirely up to you how you make it work. Um, so this is just the way that I do it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. Uh, give me a thumbs up and comment. Let me know what you thought and consider subscribing. There's lots of content on my channel already for web scraping and more web scraping, Python, etc. All that good stuff still to come. Thank you very much, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.